the storage indication method is used to route stream flows through actual reservoirs for which the relationship between outflow and storage is usually of a nonlinear nature. The differential equation of storage is This equation is discretized on the XT plane to yield. This equation is transformed into its equivalent form. In which the unknown values S2 and O2 appear on the left side of the equation and the known values appear on the right side. The left hand side of this equation is referred to as a storage indication quantity at time level equal to. In the storage indication method, it is first necessary to assemble topographic and hydraulic reservoir data in suitable form. For this purpose, the following tables are prepared. 1. Elevation storage. 2. Elevation outflow. 3. Storage outflow. 4. Storage indication outflow. For computer applications, these curves are replaced by tables of corresponding elevation storage outflow storage indication quantities. The elevation storage relation is determined based on topographic information. The minimum elevation is that for which storage is zero, and the maximum elevation is the elevation of the dam crest. The elevation outflow relation is based on the hydraulic properties of the outlet works, either closed conduit, overflow spillway, or a combination of the two. In a typical application, the reservoir pool elevation provides a head over the outlet elevation or spillway crest, and the outflow is calculated using hydraulic formulas. When routing flows through emergency spillways, storage is also expressed in terms of surcharge storage, that is, the storage above a certain level, usually the emergency spillway crest elevation. Elevation storage and corresponding elevation outflow data lead to the storage outflow relation. In turn, the storage outflow relation leads to the storage indication outflow relation. The storage indication quantity is in which S is storage, O is outflow, and delta T is the time interval. To develop a storage indication outflow relation, it is first necessary to select a time interval such that the resulting linearization of the inflow hydrograph remains a close approximation of the actual nonlinear shape of the hydrograph. For smoothly rising hydrographs, a minimum value of T sub P over delta T equal to 5 is recommended, in which T sub P is the time to peak of the inflow hydrograph. In practice, a computer-aided calculation would normally use a much greater ratio, say 10 to 20 and above. Given delta T and a set of corresponding storage S and outflow O values, the storage indication quantity can be calculated and plotted against outflow. Once the data has been prepared, the storage indication equation is used in a recursive mode to calculate the outflow hydrograph. The following steps are required. 1. Set the counter at n equal 1. 2. Use the storage indication equation to calculate the storage indication quantity at time level n plus 1. 3. Use the storage indication quantity versus outflow relation to determine the outflow at time level n plus 1. 
4. Use the storage indication quantity in outflow at time level n plus 1 to calculate Five, increment the counter by one, go back to step two and repeat. The recursive procedure is terminated when the outflow hydrograph has substantially receded back to base flow discharge. The procedure is illustrated by the following example. Assume a linear reservoir with a storage constant K equal to 2 hours. Therefore, the outflow storage relation is in which O is in cubic meters per second and storage is in cubic meters per second hour for computational convenience. Selecting delta T equal to 1 hour, the storage indication variable is from which the outflow storage indication relation is. In other words, for this example, outflow is one-fifth of storage indication. The calculations are shown in this table. Column 1 shows the time in hours. Column 2 shows the inflow hydrograph ordinates. Column 3 shows the related variable. Column 4 shows the storage indication variable. Column 5 shows the routed outflow hydrograph. For time equals zero, the initial condition is that outflow is assumed to be equal to the inflow. Thus, for time equals zero, the outflow in column 5 is equal to the inflow in column 2, that is, 100 cubic meters per second. Therefore, for time equals zero, the storage indication quantity in column 4 is equal to 5 times the outflow 100, that is 500. For time equals 0, the variable in column 3 is equal to column 4 minus twice the value of column 5, that is Next, for time equal 1, the storage indication quantity in column 4 is equal to the inflow at time equal 0 plus the inflow at time equal 1 plus the value of column 3 at time equal 0, that is 550. Next, for time equal 1, the outflow in column 5 is one-fifth of the value of column 4, 550, that is 110. The recursive procedure continues until the outflow has substantially receded to base flow, as shown in column 5, line 21. The storage indication method is applicable to reservoir routing in planned or existing reservoirs, for which the storage outflow relation is typically of a nonlinear nature.